So um, I'm, I'm Lawrence Mitchell and I'm with the Rashid and he's going to talk about peace of mind. This is something I think we all strive for. It doesn't matter where we are in life. Um, I know my mother, for instance, uh, she likes to go in the garden where she can get, uh, get close to serenity. She likes being in an environment where she really enjoys it. It's full of peace. But, and even the city here in London, I was reading the paper and I was amazed to actually read it. Was just behind some of these buildings are little parks, little areas of greenery which people actually go to because they know they can get peace of mind. So it's just very, but without peace of mind, I think we have a problem. And it's interesting, isn't it, this thing about peace of mind? When we wake up first thing in the morning, most of the time if we've had a good night's sleep, we're quite restful and we're quite, um, quite peaceful. And if you gently observe what tends to happen, suddenly we'll remember, I've got to get to work, I've got to do this, I've got to do this piece of work, I've got to check if the kids are okay, I've got to make breakfast, and then suddenly more and more thoughts fill up the mind. But before that, we're relatively peaceful. So there would seem to be a relationship between how much content the mind's got and peace of mind. And there also would seem to be a relationship between how we feel about the content and peace of mind. But we also said, you know, most people, we hear this phrase all the time, I want peace of mind. This insurance plan will give me peace of mind. Going to this job will give me peace of mind. Getting this money will give us peace of mind. But what is actual peace of mind? Perhaps peace of mind happens when the mind is at peace and that when we are at peace with our mind. Most of the time, what happens for most human beings, uh, um, Lawrence, is that most human beings are not at peace with the content of their mind. I actually find that phrase very, very interesting. I'd rather think it's even a wrong phrase if you can just take the wrong mm. metaphorically speaking. Mm. Because what we're really striving for is mind emptiness. So our minds can be completely empty of all thoughts so we can actually be at peace with ourselves. Perhaps if one's done the work that you've done, but for most people, the idea of their mind being empty, they'd feel as though that they were they were stupid because we're taught to fill up our minds. So you put your finger on a very important point. We're taught from when we're young, we need, you, we need to go to school, we need to study, we need to work hard, you need to gather all this knowledge. What, how much value, how much value is all the knowledge that most people, most people you know, how much has that served them apart from apart from the it, with their technical work that they do or with um, fixing a car or working on their computer, how much help has the knowledge that they've acquired helped them to get to a point of happiness in their life? None whatsoever. So that's where the other part of what you say, when one realises, okay, well, I've got up to this particular point in my life and I've got all of this knowledge, but it hasn't actually helped me feel happy, then sometimes one's willing to perhaps let go of some of the content. There's not, the content isn't necessarily a problem, it's our relationship. I'm actually glad you broke broke the subject because this is what I next want to talk about, which is the relationship, I think, between the weather and sky and the weather and the mind and how I came to build life beyond neighbours mm. is to show an alternative way of thinking that we are taught to do things in a certain way from the moment of form when we listen to our parents, our parents give out this class when we're old enough to go to nursery school and the teachers are telling us, showing us things and, and this so there's really a system in place all the way through until we're right into our adult when we do need everything a certain way. What life beyond labor is about is is about um, showing you that there is an alternative way of doing things. I think one of the main challenges in life for all of us is to think, well, how is it possible for us to learn things a different way? Well, if you were to ask a psychologist that, or maybe a brain scientist that, uh, they know more about you or I. We know a little bit about being a life coach and how to help people uh, look at their life. I've learned quite a bit about helping you. I've also spent the last three years, because I'm autistic and I'm interested in helping those on the autistic mm. spectrum. Mm. I've been to a number of conferences at the board mm. in America mm. and here in England. I've listened to six top uh, renowned mm. speakers. Mm. And, uh, and 
so it gets a little bit of understanding what goes on at least on the side of, of, of hair. But the, maybe, but, but one of the things I wonder is, we as human beings are too concerned about what's going on. No, I wanted to get yeah. to that. But there is another way of learning, is like a sublime language, is what the other part of the brain, if you like to call it super, the superconscious or the subconscious, is, is, is going, going back to my brain uh, absorbing, you know, probably, probably can see it clearly, or you could probably even see a person on, on a plane, which sounds quite ridiculous, in, in the sky, I can't see it. It doesn't mean to say the brain can't get to see it. The brain is searching through every imaginable sense of what's going on. So, what happens, uh, perhaps with you working with me, at some point, mm. I suddenly wake up in the morning, you somehow helped me uh, unlock something up here. And, and a piece of information, or perhaps you have influence, or you have helped me influence it. a chemical reaction inside my brain. I'm now ready to learn something new or to uh, accept something new. I'd say something, I, I'd add something there, and it might sound odd for me to say it. I think that thought is overrated, and I think that knowledge is overrated in most of our lives. It, um, in most of our lives, um, Thought leads to us being caught up in our thoughts, and knowledge often ties us up in knots. Let's go back for a moment and look at a four or five year old, a six year old. They're incredibly intelligent. They're learning this, they're, you know, the, 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 the brain is doing what they're doing, they're picking up all sorts of stuff. By the time we get that little bit older, we are constantly trying to figure stuff out, or it becomes hard work, doesn't it? Because we've been taught there's a right way, there's a wrong way, and all the rest of it. So one of the things um, that we did was that we spent a lot of time, instead of, let's say, thinking, we were looking at and thought. Because, you know, you, you said something fascinating earlier. You said with Life Beyond Labels, what it was about is helping people. First of all, you worded it, think differently. And then you said, do things differently. And I love the latter way that you described that. It would seem that thinking is something that happens. Nobody teaches us how to think. It would seem that it's going on just again like the weather in the sky but we've at somewhere along the road we're taught that we should be able to control our thoughts that's complete nonsense when somebody once turned around to me and said if we could control our thoughts what's going to be the next thought that i'm going to have we we don't control our thoughts but perhaps we influence our well well, well pa perhaps the more the more um we expose ourselves to content and stuff the more stuff that there's going on. So it's again interesting when you went back to the example of your mother, she spent a lot of time in the garden and so on, where there's less content, less stimuli. stimuli. But what I, not that I don't understand, because I, I think I do understand, you see, this is where it doesn't make sense of with information. What, it's more question, with the brain, the brain is sort of tremendous amount of information, where of course the brain, should be more interested in what can influence us. And of course... Oh, but as you say, I'd say I'm not interested in it. And this might be interesting. I'm not interested in any of that. And I, as a human being, as a coach, and what I've learned is that I've become less and less interested in anything. But, okay, but what is interesting yeah. is that when you come out with an idea, yes. it comes out of nothing. That's right. It, it would doesn't, seem. It yeah. does, so what I'm saying, all this information, yeah. all this knowledge, yeah. is no good to the conscious mind. But it's probably necessary deeper within the brain to allow thoughts like that to emerge. P perhaps, and all I would say is that um, what I've learned is that um, if we if we look at this very very gently, we find ourselves most of the time at a certain point of our life with a certain amount of content in our mind, and some of it we seem to like, some of it we don't seem to like, and we're constantly trying to work things out. But what happens, what would happen the moment we stop trying to work things out? What happens?